This is a short video to introduce innovation. Uh, in the video, we just want to look at some relevant points related to innovation, which will supplement what we've got in other videos on this topic. Uh, you will realize we have a module on innovation and there are many classes, particularly at the start, that are preparing the way for more advanced work towards the end, as you would expect. But we, what we need to do is we need to clarify what's meant by innovation, why it's important, and look at some of the, the features of innovation. And this class is adding to that uh, collection. So let's start and uh, introduce Schumpeter. Now Schumpeter is one of the big names when we consider innovation. Um, great Austrian economist, uh, economist from around the 1930s. Um, his work was seminal, it was the first of its kind, and he really popularized the whole issue of uh, innovation as a study area, as an important study area to understand both economics, economic growth, development, and the features of modern day competition, because it's the companies that innovate most effectively are the ones who become market leaders. So he argued that innovation comes about through new combinations made by an entrepreneur. And these new combinations result in a new product. So Schumpeter was concerned with the development of new products and how economies grow and develop and the, the, re the reasons why new products are introduced. But he also looked at new processes. Uh, in other words, within companies, there can be production lines, for example, and someone within the organization may decide to do things slightly differently, more efficiently. They may vary the way the work is done and reorganize it. And that constitutes innovation. So it's not just difference uh, differences in product design and what we perceive to be the product. But it's also differences in how the product was made in the first place. Schumpeter goes, goes a bit further and talks about it could be related to marketing and looking at the target markets. Perhaps uh, previously an organization targeted a particular area. Well, later it decides to expand uh, its marketing efforts and perhaps even looks towards exporting the product. So that's an innovation. It's an innovation in the way the business is conducting itself. It's a newness. It could be a new way of organizing the business as well. It may be the way the business is structured. Perhaps in the past it was structured on a very linear basis, uh, coming from the top down to the bottom. And perhaps the, the management now want to see it more in terms of functional areas, engineering having responsibility for its own tasks, uh, accountancy and finance looking after its own areas, and uh, it could be how the organization is structured, and that's a newness as well. So we're starting to see that the concept of innovation is not narrowly defined in terms of the new product, and the attributes of the product. It could be new sources of supply, and that's the innovation. It may be that the raw materials for the product uh, now come from a different area, from a different supplier, from a different country perhaps. Perhaps a, a new discovery of uh, some sources of raw materials in some other country enables new sources. Again, an innovation, a change. So really, this Schumperian view is that anything which introduces newness, a new, a new way of making the product, designing the product, delivering the product, the attributes of the product, the look of the product, anything which associated with new seems to be acceptable as innovation. Novelty in the product or service. Well, Offering something no one else does. That's important within this idea of innovation. Having a novel product, having 
some product which is new or some new process, something that others are not doing. It's a novelty. It's, it's, it's a one-off. It's a uniqueness. That's the innovation. That's the difference. And this can be perceived by anyone who looks at it, looks at perhaps the history. How was the product made in the past? How is it currently being made? Ah, the, the difference is innovation. Or it could be, just look at the product uh, now, the final product, I mean. Look at that and think about what were the attributes of the product in the past. could be in the recent past. Spot the differences, and the differences are the novelty factors, these new factors, and these are the innovative factors. We also have novelty in the process. Offering the product in a new way, a new, slightly new design, new packaging, new outlets. So there's novelty in the process, how the product is made, how it's delivered. And the complexity. Um, offering something which others find difficult to master. When companies come up with innovative ideas, they want to protect the idea. They want other companies to find it difficult to copy them. So they try to come up with complex solutions. Perhaps complex solutions that are, in fact, easy to make. But the complexity means that competitors may be put off. Now, we can see in, in our modern day world, lots of examples of this, where, um, let's say, smartphone producers add in certain characteristics to the smartphone and the competitors find it difficult to immediately copy that particular facility. It's complex. So the, the complexity tends to protect the newness, the, the innovation. The timing. Well, timing is very important in many markets. Having first mover advantage or to be a fast follower. A fast follower is not the first, but they're very near the first. They're, they're fast out of the, uh, the traps, as the expression goes. They're, they're fast onto the market. The new one has been out for a short period of time and suddenly there is competition. There's a new product that's very similar. Um, this often happens in even some of the bigger industries, for example, in the car industry. Currently, uh, we're going through a revolution in electric cars. Um, there was some of the earlier versions. The earlier versions were innovative. Then people thought they could do better and new cars came out with even better technology and, and so on. And that's likely to continue. So timing is important. Getting first mover advantage means that the company has a monopoly for that period of time. They're the only sellers of that product. But if they can't protect the product from imitation or from similar products coming onto the market, then there will be comp uh, competition. And the ones that are out second or out third, perhaps if it's near in time to the first one, they're known as fast followers. And then we have add or extend competitive factors. Um, sometimes companies can be innovative about the way they sell the product, the, the distribution outlets. Um, they may look at the price, and they may look at quality, they may look at choice, uh, they may look at distribution. So again, at the moment, we're going through a revolution in retailing, where a lot of retailing is becoming online. And many people who are associated with retail management are concerned that uh, high street shops may be closing at a very uh, at an alarming rate and becoming online so that indeed shops themselves may become a thing of the past. But if the market is there and 
if it's what the, the customers want and they're prepared to pay for this, then that presumably is the way the, the market will move. But again, that's an innovation. It's a change. It's something new. Look at the robustness of the design. Um, look at the platform. Look at the way the product is made. Look at the way it's designed and delivered. And that may encourage competition. It may encourage other producers to copy it or produce something very similar. Producers who are copying try to copy the most successful product. Clearly, they're not going to uh, try to copy the most unsuccessful product. They're going to try to copy the most successful product. So they will look to who is the market leader, what are the characteristics of the product, what are the attributes, how can they be innovated again, how can they be changed, updated, modified, improved. So looking at a robust design on the part of the producer doesn't guarantee there won't be competition in the future. It may protect the business for a short period of time, like complexity would protect the business for a short period of time, while the others try to figure out what the product is, what it does, how to make it, um, how they're able to tool up to make the product. And robust design is very similar. Uh, it has a, a platform uh, which other variations can build upon. So sometimes when companies make a product, they design it, they deliver it, but they themselves can vary the product by taking the existing production system and adding something else. They don't have to completely retool the whole production system to make uh, an extra uh, product or a variation on the product. They simply add it in. So it's forward thinking on their behalf. They're thinking about uh, what they can do in the future to protect themselves, protect their design, protect their product. And they themselves are innovating their own product, not waiting just for competitors to come in to imitate their product. They're doing it themselves. So innovation is multifaceted. The producers of an innovative product will try to innovate the product themselves to protect themselves from competition in the long run. But the competitors who want to get in on it will also try to innovate the product to try to compete away some of the profits that were accruing to the innovative firm, the innovative business. So there are many aspects to that type of uh, robust design. Companies may reconfigure the parts. Uh, they may build a more effective business network. They may, out of an innovative product, make new contacts and have new marketing channels. But they may also look at the parts, the physical parts in the product, and be able to reconfigure those parts into yet another product. So the company may produce uh, some item of electronics, but by taking some of the components out, they're able to produce a second item. So they're able to use the components in various ways or to add additional functionality to existing uh, items of production. So they are re reconfiguring the parts. They may reconfigure the business itself, how the business is structured, as I said, new marketing outlets, new channels. They may reconfigure the design of the, the whole business. They may introduce some new routines within the business which are quite innovative in terms of staff training. That could be an innovation in itself. Uh, they may look at the product that they're producing, innovate the product. They may take some of the parts out of the product and make an entirely new product, which is also innovative. The point that comes out of all of this is that the need for innovation is ever-present. 
it doesn't go away it doesn't stop customers want newness and producers try to satisfy that and also gain more market share and hence more profitability more sales by giving the customer what the customer wants and this is all part and parcel of the importance of innovation and I think that's all we need to do in that session a short video but a very important one just looking at the um, different facets associated with the Schumperian analysis of innovation uh, in fact if we do Schumpeter in detail it would be many many videos it's an extremely complex area developed by one of the masters in this area uh, Joseph Schumpeter back in the 1930s but for the purpose of this little exercise let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching